compress down the liquid CO2 into a solid form. When you dry ice blasting, handling dry ice, you want to have some light gloves, as I do. Safety glasses are always uh, a good idea when blasting as well as hearing protection. Um, the unit we have that we rent and offer does come with two 20 foot, uh, one inch airlines with a Chicago fitting on the end. This uh, fitting it makes it just much easier to um, pop right in, uh, disconnect and, and, dis and connect uh, to your airline system. You can also use a, um, a one inch uh, NPT thread as well. So we've got two different sizes of blast hoses here. We've got a one inch diameter and then we've got a one and a quarter inch. Um, if we're going to need uh, the full um, 25 or I'm sorry, full 50 foot extension with both using both hoses, we need to make sure that this hose is hooked up to the machine first. This is the larger hose. Uh, there is a, uh, a union in between the two hoses, so it goes from a one and a quarter down to a one inch, so we can hook up both of them. Right now, our union from one and a quarter to one is actually hooked up to the machine. If we're in an operation where we only need 25 foot of uh, blast hose, then we can hook just this hose directly up to the unit as, and bypass the larger blast hose altogether. Um, it is important though that we do know that this uh, one inch hose is the only hose that will fit and hook up to the blast gun, and that is because we have a one inch uh, MPT thread on the end of the uh, gun. So if we are um, going to be using a shorter segment, then we need to make sure that we would uh, take this union that would go between the two blast hoses and just hook it directly to the machine so we could hook up just a shorter, a smaller hose. Um, provided that you have all your air set up, uh, you could hook up. If you're using shop air, you already have a filtration set up on that, so there won't be um, any need for the after cooler, which is right here, that accompanies our unit. Um, if you're using portable air, a portable compressor, then you will um, potentially need to hook up this after cooler, take out any water that would be uh, produced within the airline. So uh, once we have all of our airline um, requirements set up, uh, the first thing we're going to do is purge the airline. Make sure that there's no sediment, that there is no um, moisture in the airline. Once we've done that, uh, we can hook up a machine. So we'll start hooking up by hooking the air um, up and then hooking the machine up. And then once the uh, machine is hooked up, then what we will do is we'll purge again. We'll purge uh, the machine just to make sure that there is no moisture that may have uh, collected either in the blast hoses, airline hoses, or even potentially in um, the machine itself. Once that is done, then what we will do is uh, introduce dry ice into the unit and get going blasting. This is the after cooler. This is also part of our um, rental option. This would be used in an application uh, of a contractor application where you're using portable um, compressed air. What this does is it pulls out the moisture out of the um, air that's being produced by the compressor, filters it out so that it does not dump it into the dry ice blaster. Your air source comes in here in the front. This is completely uh, pneumatically run. So your air source comes in here. This is again a one inch NPT hookup. The air is going to come in here. It's going to run through here, run through this cooling system, travel through here. There's a, um, a series of uh, filtration right here. And then it will come back out, fill some clean air. That is hooked up to the unit here, and then we will not have any moisture. We also have a release valve on the after cooler that we leave cracked, just like this, and then this is where the water will um, evacuate out of the unit, depending on how hot and how humid um, the air is and how much moisture is in there. You may have to stop every five to ten minutes or so to fully purge this out so that water does not build up and go circulating past any of, of this filtration. So this is the front side of the machine. We have our power button here. When we push this on, this illuminates green. It means that the, pot, the machine is live. Um, we've got power running to it. This button here is, um, is just a, it's not a, a full emergency stop. All this does is stop ice flow 
from down here out to the end of the gun. There's still power coming to the unit, so it's not a full-on emergency stop. It's just a stop of the ice flow. This knob right here controls your um, feed rate of dry ice. So you have one pound, two pound, three pounds, four pounds, and five pounds per minute. This knob or dial over here on the side, this is gonna tell us how much um, air is coming into the unit. When we pull the trigger on the gun, it will dip down and it will tell us what our blasting pressure is as well. There is a knob down here at the bottom. This is our regulator knob. We can turn this to the left and that will actually decrease the amount of air pressure going out. We can turn it to the right to increase. It can also be locked into place by pushing this, um, by pushing this ring in and then it will not turn it off. Here's where we hook up the blast hose. And then this is also our power source as well too. And that runs all the way through both blast hoses and then out to the gun. And then that will um, tell the machine when to fire, um, when we're pulling the trigger and begin the operations. On the inside, on the back of the machine, we have our 40 pound hopper. This connection here is um, where the air source comes into the unit. It's a one inch NPT thread, and then we also have a release valve on the back side as well too, to depressurize the machine, as well as a safety um, pigtail to hold the hose in case if it ever were to become dislodged. Our rental unit comes on a four by four skid. Um, it's designed so that the uh, blaster can be operational on the skid or off the skid. You can see our blaster here, you see the after cooler here, they're both mounted on. Um, up top here is where we would store our store the, uh, the two blast hoses and two air lines, as well as the rest of the, the kit, which would be the gun. On the unit itself here, as I said, you can operate on or you can operate the machine off. And it's quite easy. We have a ramp. What we do is just unscrew this here. There's a couple of pins in the back, slide those out, as well as on the after cooler here, there's a couple of uh, couple of locks right here, we just unlock that, and everything is easily slid right off of the, uh, off the skin. This is the blast gun. We have the applicator on the end here. You see, it just threads right in at the, on the end. On the gun itself, you've got a safety tr um, trigger. When it's pulled back, it's in uh, the safety position, so there's no power coming to the gun. Push it forward, we have power coming to the gun, and we'll be able to blast. Blasting trigger, as we said, so we'll pull this back, depress that, and that will allow air and ice to flow through the gun. We have a trigger on the back here. There's two settings. The first setting down at the bottom is just air. If we flip it up to the second setting, then we have air and ice flowing through. We also have a tactical light at the top. The tactical light will shine um, a small beam onto the, uh, onto the workpiece so you can help illuminate the work area a little bit more as well. And we have our one inch nozzle. It's a straight flow shot with a one inch spray. This is our, the most aggressive um, and effective nozzle as far as uh, for rapid cleaning goes. The second nozzle that we have that's available upon request is our fragmenting nozzle. You can see right here, there's a dial on here that we can turn. And when we turn that, when we're at zero, it's full pellets going straight through. If we're getting into a application where we need to um, be a little bit more gentler in the cleaning, we may want to look at using a fragmenting nozzle. When we turn this knob to these different settings, what that does is it introduces aerodynamic pins into the airstream that break up the um, dry ice pellet into finer pieces, allowing it to be less aggressive and cleaner.